يعني الكل تحت الشجر الزيتون يعني كنا نحن عايشين بالبريف يعني كل واحد عنده بيت وبقلبه أرض كبيرة في أشجار كان لما كنا أول مسار الحرب يعني الكل مني يشوف طيارة خلاص يعني الكل بجمع أولاده وبجمع أهله وبيعدوا بمكان ما فيه ضوء لأن الطيارة من تشوف مكان فيه ضوء كانت تضرب دغري حتى هلا نحن يعني عدنا بالضيعة يعني ما في غير كم بيت أو لما هجينا طلعنا ما ضل غير كم بيت وأكترية البيوت مضروبين وهيك دغري وخلص بدنا نطلع يعني الكل بلش يهرب ففلعنا نحن كان نهار كتير صعب لما لما اجينا من سوريا اجينا تهريب نحن ودبرت اجاري عطيته للمهرب نقول له تهريب يعني عطيته للزلمه طلعنا من المنطقه اللي احنا فيها وطلعنا انا وهالاولاد ما بنعرف شيء وصلنا الحدود قال هلا بنمشي شوي وبتصلوا مشينا مشينا يعني بحياتي ما مشيت مثل هذيك الليلة ولا صار علي مثل هذيك الليلة ما أنا يعني سمعوا الذيب يعوي قالوا مين هذا يوم قلت لهم هذا يعني عند غنميات عند رعيان كليب هذا فضلنا ست ساعات بنمشي على الجبل يعني كنا خايفين لا حتى إنه نمسك أو حدا بيشوفنا وصلنا عاد لهون احنا ما بنعرف انه جايبيننا خلصة ثاني جايبيننا خلصة قالوا بدكم ترجعوا ارجعوا وين صارت الدنيا جبل وليل ظلمة وين برجع لا بيت بسوريا لا حدا ظل اللي جوزي توفى بيت تهدم ما عاد فيني ارجع حطيت عيني بعين الله ومشيت الحمد لله وصلنا وصلنا هنا يعني لاجئين شو وصلنا حالتنا مسخمة والحمد لله أنا اسمي ماهر عمري 13 سنة أنا يعني صف عندي هيك عشر أخوة مات واحد وبقينا تسعة بنتين وسبع شباب أنا جيت من سوريا بعد ما توفى بيي بكم شهر جيت هون على لبنان وهلا صار لي مقيم بلبنان صار لي شي ست سنين من 2016 صار لي هون خلال النهار أول ما بوقعنا أول ما في بقوم بغسل وشي بفوت على الحمام بطلع برا شوي هيك على الشمس برجع إذا في عندي دروس بدرس ما في عندي يعني بطلع برا اذا في اولاد بلعب معهم ما في اولاد برجع هون بشوف لي شغله اتسلى فيها ايه اكثر شيء انا بحب هون نلعب بالحي اكثر شيء هون بنحب نلعب انا ورفاتي قلل وفتبول و لقيطة وهيك 
أنا بحس يعني اللعب فيه بيغير العالم كله فاللعب عنده القوة و بخلي العالم بتصير أحسن Here we are, 2017, our first meeting. This is where it all started. It was the first time we ever met, and we didn't quite know where we were heading, but we had one thing in common, we were passionate about the unknown. The first meeting took place at the FIS HQ in Thun, Switzerland. That's where we drew the first lines of what would become a four years project, and by far one of the most impactful and eyes-opening experience of my life. So, let's get into it. Here at FIS, uh, I'm in charge of a project called Bring Children to the Snow. And uh, the project is as the name suggests, it's to bring kids to the snow. We at this time have a little over 400 event organizers around the world. And just under the Snow Kids project alone, there's been now 3,300 events. So it's been a successful project so far. And together with its twin project, World Snow Day, it's really building a foundation for the future of snow sports. We have a number of partners involved in the project as well. Recently, Right to Play renewed their cooperation with FIS, so they're on board now again as well. And if I understand correctly, the idea now is to do something in the countries where you guys operate. You to... Before going too far, let me explain who is in this room and why we decided to make this project together. My name is Pat Bergener. I'm a professional snowboarder and musician. I was born and raised in Switzerland, but I'm half Lebanese. Then there's Mark, my brother and manager. This is a video of him when I landed my run at the Olympics. <laughs> then there's Etienne, the most talented filmmaker I ever got the chance to work with. He's so down to earth and driven by his passion, just a great human being. He's here to document the whole adventure. Then there's Andrew from the FIS. He's always so serious about everything. Take a photo. But we love him. How are we linked? Well, I'm competing in Snowboard Halfpipe World Cups, and those are organized by the FIS, the International Ski and Snowboard Federation. And then there's Philip. He's in charge of the business development at Try to Play Switzerland, an NGO active in 15 countries whose goal is to protect, educate, and empower children from displaced backgrounds. Philip's always down for a good laugh, but also connects the dots for this project. What's important for now is that it is FIS charity of choice and that I'm an ambassador of Right to Play Switzerland and they have programs in Lebanon, my second country. Now you get it. Anyway, back to Andrew. There's a rough plan at the moment of what we want to do. The question is if we can do it, uh, that's there. So the idea that we had at the moment was to do a project in Lebanon, but specifically for kids from displaced backgrounds. As you know, we use uh, play-based learning as a method uh, for the children. And uh, the idea would be going there, seeing the projects and giving you the opportunity with some of the kids in the project, go to the snow and have them explore the snow. So actually that would be the link and the match to bring children to the snow programs he just explained. Yeah. They've had a really tough life as well and we feel that by doing this not only are we bringing the kids to the snow but we're really trying to give them a break from a hard life. My entire life changed on the backside 360 on the snowboard. Mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't like snowboarding when I was 10 I just wanted to skateboard all the time. I, was, I did this backside 360 on that day and like just a, an emotional switch in my body like I want to do this in my life and I'm sure these kids with one day on snow, they could, they could have that emotional switch that, you know, change their entire perspective of life. It could be a really powerful project. Well, look, I think the general idea is basically there. Um, I think it is very much a question of 
can we discover what play is. And that was the spark, discover what play is. The initial idea was to bring 40 children to the mountain, because as you can imagine, most of them have never seen snow. We wanted to offer them a day that would hopefully shake up their lives. But what if on the way there, we could show the world the power of play? We were on a mission. And here we are, Lebanon, a land that sits between mountains and sea. Once called the Switzerland of the Middle East, now a land of contrast devastated by wars and crises. Nearly half of the country's population are refugees, and there are more Lebanese living abroad than in their own country. A country of rich cultural heritage, diversity and craftsmanship home of some of the oldest cities in the world, numerous anticities and cultures that cohabit in one of the smallest countries on earth. Famous for its world-renowned cuisine, wines and beaches.
We were on a mission to support some children here. But first we needed to understand why Lebanon was facing such difficulties. So Lebanon has always been the weakest link, I would say, probably in the region that we exist in. We've got some neighbors that are politically, uh, at many times in different parts of history, have not been aligned with, with uh, the Lebanese people's interests. And this has led, you know, directly and indirectly to, to wars, to occupation, and, you know, to other forms of conflict. This, this country has been put under a lot of pressure, there's no denying that. I mean, when you've got a population of four million people and then there's a million and a half refugees all of a sudden that come into the country, uh, there's also the Palestinian refugees uh, that are about 300 to 400,000 and then there are other refugees as well. So if you look at our population, the Lebanese population, and you look at the refugee population, it's almost half. So, so Lebanon geographically is small. It uh, doesn't have many resources up until recently when we've discovered oil and gas, but previously that was never a reality. And so it's a country that's pretty much has had to make do with the human capital that it possesses. It's about the people that are in the country that have been able to really get through living in a region that is, that is for the most part hostile and, and, and unstable. All of the conflict that you witness in Lebanon, there's a huge external influence that comes into that. And it's a lot of times out of the control of the Lebanese even. And this is something that has had a very negative impact on, uh, on, on the Lebanese population in general. The history that children are facing here in Lebanon is one that goes back to the Lebanese uh, civil war, I would say, in terms of relevant and recent history. The victims of that concise military operation are now refugees. Here, these some children now enjoy a freedom forced on them by a massacre in which many of their fathers were slaughtered. Children in Lebanon have lived a state of fear, anxiety and uncertainty ever since I can remember. I mean, I, I'm from that war generation. And, uh, and I still see it today in, in a lot of the programs that we run in Lebanon. From generation to generation, we haven't been able to really manage that. We haven't been able to, to, to deal with that. We haven't been able to reconcile between each other so that uh, we lessen some of that fear and uncertainty that exists. People living in this country are already suffering from the lack of services and necessities. They don't even have their basic rights. So there's no education, there's no health care, uh, they don't have any hope for the future. And if we want to go in specific into the communities, a lot of children, they don't even have their IDs. So we have a big problem of children being stateless. And these children, they don't have any future because they can't get an education, they can't work, and technically they don't exist in Lebanon. They also live with a constant feeling that they're not accepted, that they're, that they're uh, outcasts, that they're uh, just here temporarily, which is true, and then they will be returning, but they're not getting the level of services in many ways that they should be getting. So, so a lot of them live in very dire situations, a lot of them are discriminated against, there's issues of access, there's lack of services. So through play, we are actually able to show these children through methods and ways that they can understand that there is a better chance for them, there are other opportunities. Play is your trigger, it's your starting point. It's, it's what we use to get people to change their mindsets. It's what we use to get people mobilized and organized. Play is a trigger to get people to change their mindsets. That's our first discovery. The next step was to go on the field to witness how and why these programs worked for these kids. That's when Etienne met Maher. He invited him so we could document his story, his daily life, the environment in which he lives, and how playing was impacting him. I when I was Syria, there were a lot of بسال كان في عندنا هونيك بيت أنا وكان في عندنا أرض أنا وكان عندنا أشجار وأقنام ودجاجات وكان في عندنا كلب بس هلا ما عش في لا بيت لا أرض لا شجر لا بابا لا سيارة 
لا الغنم لا الدجاج يعني لا كهرب لا مي هن هون البيئة اللي عايشين فيها كلها همج يعني ما حدا بيرد على التاني ما في عمل فريقي يعني النظافة ما في التواصل ما في ما حدا بيعطي مجال للتاني يعطي رأيه أو بالأحرى ما بيسمعه يعني بيحتاج كتير إشياء هون الحارة هلا يعني وكمان بالبيت يعني ما في كهرب ما بتجي لحد الساعة ستة مساء وبتنطع ل 12 بالليل يعني وما في هالمي المتوفرة منيحة والمي مالحة حتى مش حلوة يعني كمان البيت ناقصه كتير اشياء وكمان في نشا لما تشت الدنيا بتنش علينا الغرفة الدراسة يعني حتى الدراسة أحيانا ما بنعرف ندرس كل في عندنا مثل امتحان أو هومورك يعني ما بنعرف نحل لأنه أمي ما بتعرف لا تقرأ ولا تكتب يعني ما فينا نساعد بعض <تصفيق> اللعب واهلي ورفقاتي والهون الحي اللي عشت فيه يعني مع مرور الوقت قدرت يعني انه اتخطى اللي صار معي وهيك يعني ما عادش انه كل شوي لا انه بتذكر شو صار معي وشو كنت عيش وهيك شوي شوي مع مرور الوقت تحسن الوضع انا صار لي مع رايت بلاي صار لي شي سنتين بنروح معهم بنعمل رحلات وبنروح على الملعب وهنيك كمان بيلعبونا وبيعلمونا اليوم عنا يهتم يوم عنده روح على العلال عندكم بفيق من يفيق مهتم بده يمشي بده يروح لهنيك حتى أنا بسأله رحت إجيتي يقول لي إيه شوفوا مهتم يعني والخليه يروح يعني إنه مرتاح نفسيته اللعب ساعد ماهر على هيك خطوات يعني على هيك أزمة خطاها باللعب ينسى الولد ونساه يعني يوم أنه يروح يلعب ينسى أكثر من يوم أنه بيبرك بالبيت يوم أنه بيبرك حدي أو يبرك بالبيت بيصير بيفكر بالمواضيع هذيك Before going too much into details of how Right to Play works, we attended a weekly music session with Maher. They told us that this is not mandatory for the children of this camp. But since they started implementing sessions here, more and more children attended each session that took place. <laughs> The basic idea behind this session is to teach children life skills through playing, in a way that they can understand it, because once they are engaged in what they do, that's when the magic happens. 24. <laughs> The music session didn't last for long. It quickly turned into a real chaos. <laughs> and that made me realize that all they wanted was to have fun and be able to play freely in a safe environment. And that's exactly what Ride to Play provides them.
so that's how a session works. But we still don't really know how right to play and playing exactly works, right? In Lebanon, we work with the children and youth from all ages, and from 0 to 18. We have uh, around 25 uh, staff who can uh, pretty much work with the community on a daily basis to ensure children are empowered, protected and educated. So we started with facilitating just activities for the children, focusing on holistic uh, child development. While now we are working with ministries of education in maybe 10 to 12 countries. So we trained their teachers on the play-based methodology. We did the cascade models where we train governmental officials, uh, teachers, trainers, to take the lead in teaching other teachers. So Right to Play is delegating the responsibility of training the teachers to the government so that we can reach more and more. And this is the key of success for Right to Play which differs it than any other uh, organization. By delegating that responsibility for the organization themselves, they can sustain the program without even the uh, presence of right to play. And this is what we are aiming for, to scale up and to sustain our programs. Once they found the right partner and taught them about the play-based mythology, these partners conduct on field sessions each week to give the children the opportunity to learn essential skills in a safe space. It can be through sports, art, music, and more. Always while playing, in a manner that they can understand. So now we're having a kids' athletic session. It's in Burj Barajni camp in Beirut. It's a Palestinian camp. We implement this session here in this camp with the local NGO. The goal of this session it's uh, definitely to uh, give uh, physical ability for the kids, to learn the kids uh, uh, about life skills. Each uh, game is related to a life skills that also targets something in their daily life. The methodology is based on the experiential learning cycle. It uh, makes you learn from the experiences. So it can be a game, it can be your participation in a sport specific, it can be in your participation in creative play or in free play. So that kind of your participation is an experience for you. So right to play build on that experience using the experiential learning cycle and uh, make a strategy of discussion with the children based on three uh, steps. First, the children and youth uh, and participants are asked to reflect on what they experienced during the game. So they will be sharing what they thought about it, what is their emotion, how did they feel, how they built strategies and so on. The next step, they will be asked to uh, connect what they just practiced with their reality outside of the school or the classroom or these experiences. So by doing that, they are connecting the learning with their past experiences and past knowledge. And the last and the most important thing is how they will apply this learning in their future. And this took them to a point that they have to think about action planning, how they can put the learning that they just got from the play in future planning. We believe in this way we are using the play not just for fun and entertainment, but as a very uh, strong tool to learn skills out of what you enjoy doing. Because we realized we do too many things in life without noticing the importance of what we are doing. Because we didn't analyze it, no one asked us about it. But when you ask a question and an effective question, you are putting the, the, the interviewer in a position that he or she have to think deeply about what she is doing. 
So the learning will become more effective when you live it yourself, when you express it in yourself, think about it, okay, how I, I'm going to use it in the, in the future. So the role of play for children is critical in being able to disseminate the right messages and approaches for them to be able to cope in their daily lives with the fear and uncertainty that they face. And so I think it's, it's absolutely vital. Play brings communities together. Uh, as I mentioned, play works on so many levels. First, we can develop a person and, you know, change this person and change lives or empower this person. Uh, once we can work, you know, once the individual knows his worth or her worth, you know, they know what they can do and they have hope, this person will actually want to transfer this to another person. Through play, you are able to get these children and these families and these communities together. Once we are able to get these communities to think about the common challenges, they will be able to provide solutions for these communities. This is how we're doing it. You know, you can do it through play because once these people are playing, people are actually forgetting their troubles. People are actually forgetting what they're passing through and they're just engaged in the moment. And once they are engaged in the moment, this is the secret because in that moment you can uh, use play to actually transform this moment into something positive and for something for them to take back with their with them to their homes and actually work for something better Thanks to their dedication and methods, Ride to Play changes millions of lives every year. I know what most of you are thinking, but is this really going to change the world? As a kid, I faced myself a really tough childhood. Nothing compared to them, but I was lost. Couldn't fit in society to a point where I was even wondering what the I was doing on this planet. And as soon as I discovered my purpose here and found something my heart beat for, my whole life changed. My whole freaking life changed. This is exactly why I'm going to Lebanon since four years. I believe that every single human being must have the chance to have a spark in his life. I think and hope that showing this to all of you will lighten up a feeling in your heart and souls. And that is my way to change the world. So we are in Beirut and we just got to the refugees camp. We've been waiting for this moment for about three years now. Speaking about this, bringing kids on snow and today is the day. We're about to pick up the kids. I'm super excited. I think we're all really excited because it's been a lot of work uh, to make this happen. So let's see how it goes. صراحة لا أنا الحظ كيف تقولك خايف ليوم التلج أنا تخعاتي ليوم الجمعة التلج بتجي هيك الشمس وتروح كل التلج على حظ التلج بيروح لا 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 ما نخيروه يعني راح هيك شوف الدنيا بيضة بشوف بشوف التلج فرحتي لا توصى لأن ولا مرة ركبت على لوح تزلج وتزلجت على التلج وهيك يعني راح تكون راح يكون شعور كثير كثير مش طبيعي. Our goal with this day was to offer them a day that they would forever remember. As soon as we got on the bus, we could really feel their excitement. 
and that was one of the highlights of the trip. A bus filled of crazy beautiful energy. This emotion travels and touches me deeply. Even though my Lebanese is really bad, we connected. They all tried my guitar and we even discovered talents in there. I was so excited to see them on snow for the first time. incredible to see them they're like they've never seen snow most of them they're so hyped and I can't believe they're snowboarding you know they look like they look like kings look at that yeah, it's gonna be so much fun I don't know how uh, good they could be but uh, I'll do my best to teach them by the teacher yeah. how much fun they have. This is the power of playing, you know, this is the power of sports, the power of uh, snowboarding. You know, they're just here and they're having the best time of their lives and so am I, so, I'm, so are we all, you know, it's like such a strong energy and yeah, you just realize that this is, this is what it's all about, you know, playing. <laughs> I think the play project was a necessity, especially in these dire times that we live in, you know. Parents are under pressure for putting food at the table. Children are working to help their parents get money to the household. During all of these situations and hardships that they're passing through, you know, they don't even have time 
to really feel like they're a child again. So I think the play project was very necessary for that. However, I do believe this has to be done on a regular basis because, you know, I'm gonna close my statement with one quote that was said from the children yesterday. When the children were returning home and they were going down the bus, they told us, take us back up there to the snow. And I think that says a lot on how important that day was. Projects like this are especially important uh, to provide some of that relief and happiness and enjoyment for children that are participating in these activities. What I would say is that we need to do a lot more of these types of projects so that we can support uh, children, but also we need to look at the family as a whole as well. I mean, I, I foresee that a project like this could also include parents because parents require just as much support as the children do in this type of situation and sometimes even more. So it's a very important project. It's one that should continue and it's one that should even grow. This is it, the end of a chapter. I cannot thank these kids enough for showing the world their strong energy and willpower to fight in life. I live in a world where everything is given. I have drinking water, food, a shelter, and a close family. I tend to forget about it from time to time. I think we all do. But again, these experiences are here to remind us of what we have. A change starts with realization, then comes reflection and action. This is pretty much what happened looking back to these four years. Realize, reflect, act, and repeat. Thank you for watching. You can now tap on your shoulder and give yourself some time to feel good about yourself. I hope and know that you'll find a way to give back, because giving is what makes us humans true heroes of our time. Much love, my friends. I hope to see you soon. Pat. My colors fade back in time Sweet city, I thought you were mine Been looking back and we never learn Bonfire fall, oh, all that we've earned We keep on rolling backwards Rolling back, rolling back Keep on rolling backwards Oh, keep on rolling backwards Rolling back, rolling back Keep on rolling backwards We see the world in such different ways from weeping willow to the flames that follow me home We see the waves, they are ruling the bay And hope for the day Rolling back